brothers and sisters, if I want to make you happy as an individual, usually or normally, I would have to do things that would make you happy. I would have to know what it is that makes you happy, what it is that makes you sad. I would have to stay away from the things that would upset you and you would have to understand that I am trying my best to stay away from those things that are upsetting you. You will probably notice and you, if you are a normal human being, you would understand if I have faltered slightly, but where I have made an intentional or a huge blunder, perhaps it will take you a little bit longer to forgive me when it comes to me trying to please you, but having done the wrong thing. I hope you understand what I've just said. Because we want to talk about the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In order to get to that, let's talk about ourselves first. Because when we say my pleasure, your pleasure, what is it referring to? Take a look at husband and wife. Take a look at a person whose children, for example, he is upset with or she is upset with. It would only be because they've done something or said something that was not befitting them as children. That is why they would be upset. Otherwise, for no reason, do you think a father can just say, I'm upset with you? Okay, I'm, I'm angry with you. Or husband and wife, something needs to be wrong. Something needs to have been done that was not the proper way of doing things. And that is what would earn the displeasure of one another. So now let's forget about that example for a moment or apply it, but on a much higher level because Allah is the creator. The examples that we give of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are far higher. They are nowhere near what we've just said, but just to draw it closer to our brain and mind and to make us think and ponder, we said what we've just said. So with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we were to say, I want to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we are doing nothing actively about it, we would be foolish because I cannot say, Alhamdulillah, I am a Muslim. I say the Shahada uh, and I'd like to earn the pleasure of Allah. But come time of Salah and I'm nowhere near fulfilling my Salah. Come time for fulfillment of my duties unto Allah and I'm the last person who is fulfilling them. In fact, primarily to start with, come time to know what it is that will displease Allah and I have no knowledge. So people sometimes get upset when you tell them, or when we are reminded as human beings of what not to do because that would earn the displeasure of Allah, we become upset. We say, who is he to say this? Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, and this has happened several places and even the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has told us of this. And we know of it from the stories of aforetime when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they were corrected, the people were corrected and what did they say? We have found our forefathers doing this and we are following their path. We are following their footsteps. That's one of the excuses. So if someone tells you, my brother, what you are doing here is actually wrong. There is a difference between culture and religion. Where culture does not go against religion, we don't mind it. But where culture and religion go against each other, one drops out. Which one? The culture drops out. So this is a primary teaching in Islam. That where culture and religion happen to clash, the culture is dropped and the religion takes precedence. But where the two of them do not clash, we may fulfill. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant goodness. Some cultures come about with a lot of goodness, good character, good manners. And this is why if you watch the non-Muslims in this particular country, you may find that some of them have better character and conduct based on their upbringing than the Muslims themselves. Because we sometimes have ca character and conduct that is not even based on the Islamic teaching because we suffer ignorance. And when someone corrects us, we are the first sometimes to feel bad and to start pointing fingers and to start getting angry. It will get to a stage when we will never be able to be corrected because we don't want to be told. So primarily, if you want to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you need knowledge. You need knowledge. You need to know things. You need to know what sincerity is. And you need to sincerely know what sincerity is.
One might say, what do you mean you need to sincerely know what sincerity is? Let me tell you. Genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, I need to know what is the meaning of ikhlas? What is the meaning of sincerity? What is it that will result in the pleasure of Allah? And that search needs to come about as a result of a genuine feeling within me. A lot of people revert to Islam by the will of Allah. They become strong Muslimin because they have it in their hearts that, you know, I need to learn what's right. They have a genuine thirst for what is right. They come out and they start searching and hunting until they get to a point where you find that they have found the truth. They have found it and they will tell you, mashallah, this is the truth. We have searched, we have asked, we have tried to find where you are sincere. You will be able to learn with sincerity that which will benefit you. Where a person is not sincere, you might pack yourself with a lot of information, but it is not beneficial knowledge. You might have a lot of information, but sometimes you find it's not beneficial knowledge. You haven't practiced upon it. You haven't really taught others. You haven't passed the candle, meaning you haven't lit the candles of others and so on. So it is very important for us to learn and to be sincere in that learning. Very important. And this is how we will be able to start off this whole journey, which will obviously earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why when we talk about knowledge and ilm, now the ilm that we speak about, generally we are talking of that which Allah has taught. Obviously, some of the scholars have gone into a little bit of detail, making mention of the importance of that knowledge, which will benefit you in your worldly life as well. You need to have some form of education as well. That which is, does not go against the teachings of the Sharia. Ah, you need to know, you need to have knowledge, you need to be educated. That too is extremely important and you need to pass it on. You know, like we say, we need doctors, we need Muslim doctors. We need, for example, accountants, we need Muslim accountants. So, if you excel in your field of medicine as a Muslim, we will say what you have is knowledge, knowledge of a certain aspect of existence and something that we actually need to know. But if you take a careful look at your own character and conduct together with your spirituality, it will determine whether you are a Muslim doctor or you're just a doctor. There's a big difference between the two. One is a Muslim doctor where as soon as someone sees them, automatically that Islamic identity is manifest because of the goodness of the person, the character, the love, the conduct, the way they operate, the way they come across and the humbleness, humility together with fulfilling their duties. You know, sometimes we have people who are Islamophobic, if I can say that. They really don't like the Muslims, not at all. And every little thing and they, they, they have something nasty to say. And when we sometimes happen to deal with them, they deal with us in a very clandestine way because they say, you know what, this man is a Muslim. Uh, I'd rather just cheat him or deceive him. If they got to give you some goods, they give you the worst of the lot because you're a Muslim. I hope that's not the case in this country. But if it was the other way around, we would say, brother, you are sinful. You are a Muslim. How can you do that to someone else? If a person who's not a Muslim comes to you, you're a doctor. It is your duty to fulfill whatever you have to in the most correct way, in the best way possible, such that when you are finished treating them by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will have an image of Islam that is now correct. They will be able to understand what a Muslim stands for. They will be able to understand that this is Islam and by that they will inch a step closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the process, you are earning the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are earning the pleasure of Allah because what has happened, the deen is spreading through you practicing upon that particular deen. And this is why when you speak to someone and you invite them to Islam, Alhamdulillah, it's good. They will accept by the will of Allah, if Allah wills, like you know, You will not guide whomsoever you wish, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides whomsoever He wishes. So, if you take a careful look at inviting people, one of the best ways of bringing people across is when they are convinced just by interaction with you that this is the correct faith. That is a powerful way because you haven't yet said anything and you don't even know their level of hatred or closeness towards this religion. But 
your exemplary character proved that you have lit another candle by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that will continue it becomes a reward for you and obviously for those who have followed may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who can benefit ourselves and benefit others as well so my brothers and sisters a very very important point like we say we learn we seek knowledge we have the ilm the hadith of the prophet sallallahu speaks of a person who treads the path of seeking knowledge allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the path of paradise easy for that particular person man salaka tariqan yaltamisu fihi ilman sahala allah lahu bihi tariqan ila al jannah whosoever treads a path going to seek knowledge allah through that makes the person's path to paradise quite simple quite easy it means allah becomes pleased with them the condition is sincerity you need to do it sincerely and you need to want to learn how to follow the path which was taught to us by muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so with sincerity inshallah we will be able to learn we will be able to understand why we are in the dunya if i make it my business to keep asking questions why am i in this world if i am sincere about it i will come up with the correct answers I will be able to draw the correct line between materialistic life and my spiritual life, meaning my religious life, my connection with my maker. And I will be able to know that this temporary life in this particular dunya is not really going to get me anywhere if I concentrate on the materialistic aspect of it. But if I were to strike the correct balance, I can enjoy my life in this dunya within the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he has allowed for us really to live a life that is comfortable alhamdulillah imagine if colors were prohibited and everything else and you weren't supposed to breathe in this particular way and that imagine if all that was part of the rules and regulations people would say Phew, i cannot even survive but by the will of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's made things easy and he has drawn for us that which is permissible that which is prohibited in a way that everything that is prohibited is actually harmful whether you know it or you don't know it. Sometimes we may understand the harm in something and sometimes we will not understand the harm in something. But if Allah has declared it and you've learned it with sincerity and you are prepared to surrender to what Allah has said, believe me, the pleasure of Allah is close at hand. That is how you earn the pleasure of Allah. But if Allah has decreed something and we know he says in Surah Al-Ahzab, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ It is not for a believing male or female that when Allah and His Rasul have declared something, decreed something, that they feel they have a choice in that regard. If they feel they have a choice in that regard, they become further away from the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they can surrender, they will achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And do you know the most beautiful aspect of Islam is that when we surrender to Allah's instruction, we will always lead a happier life. Every single time we will lead a happier life. So when there are rules and regulations, they are there in order to guide us to lead a better life in the dunya and to earn the akhirah. Let me give you an example of a school. When you have a top private school and you pay a lot of fees and you enter the school, they have lots of rules and regulations in order to discipline you, in order to build you as an individual, in order to be able to make you prepared for the life once you graduate from that particular college or school so when you get to the top school they want your uniform in a specific way you dress in a specific way your hair is in a specific way your nails are in a specific way you will stand up and greet in a specific way you will not sit down if this happens and you will sit down if that happens and you need to do this and do that and this is the timing and if you are out for so long you need this type of an excuse note and what have you all the rules and regulations are there far more than the ordinary school but people go there and they call it that's a top college that's a top school man you know the graduates from that college the minute they open their mouths, you can tell this person's highly educated 
but they suffered, they struggled, they paid fees, they went through, they endured, they did not question those rules and regulations because they wanted to reach the heights that the others who graduated from the same college have reached. Why then when it comes to Islam, which is by far the greatest of all schools, subhanallah, if I can even call it that, we find ourselves wanting. Where? Allah declares something, it's a rule and a regulation, but we want to question it. We want to ask about it. We want to say, no, look, we're allowed to ask about in order to learn, but to reject and to deny and to say no, and to, to have, think you have a choice about it and to think that we can arrive at greater happiness, to think we can arrive at greater happiness based on something that will be against what Allah and his Rasul have stated. Wallahi, we would never be able to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, as we draw close to Salatul Maghrib, it is important that I remind myself and yourselves that we are the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will be returning to our maker. We as Muslims are the luckiest of the lot. When we put our head down just now in Salatul Maghrib, may Allah grant us the ability to put it down. It is solely and only for the one who made me, no one else. That is why I put my head on the ground. This is the beauty of Islam. This is what is the, really that within me that I know for a fact I cannot have been doing something wrong my head is on the ground for who the one who made me who made me here I owe you I owe it to you I say subhana rabbi al-a'la amazing may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all may he accept our salah and may he accept uh, the gathering that we have here today inshallah we will continue just after salatul maghrib by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullahi wa lakum, wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, alhamdulillahi wahdahu, wa salatu wa salamu ala man la nabiya ba'dahu wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Brothers and sisters, we continue from where we left off. We are speaking of the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, there are many ways of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and earning his pleasure. But primarily, if the core of the tree is not as firm as it should be, then we will not be able to build on that particular tree, nor will it grow with the correct type of branches and fruit. So therefore, it's important for us to know that the primary issue that displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like we said at the beginning, we need to know what makes him unhappy. What is it that displeases Allah? Well, there is one very, very serious matter that sometimes, sadly, a lot of people do not like to talk about, yet it should be the most spoken about matter. Because if something displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should be aware of it. We should be knowing that this particular item is very serious. How can I earn the pleasure of Allah? Claim to want to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through, for example, charities and being a good person and kind and so on. When my initial link with Allah is not even there. Allahu Akbar. So it's, for example, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes uh, the kuffar. For example, he says, regarding their deeds we have granted them the recompense of their deeds already so we have made them like that which would be an ash strewn all over you see if you have coupons for all your deeds Say, for example, I have coupons for my deeds. Those coupons are going to be valid to be used in the Akhirah by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the fact that I have them with me, Allah will grant me a status in the dunya as well. He will make things easy for me. But if I spend those coupons completely in the dunya, when I get to the Akhirah, what would have happened to all my deeds? I will be told you had them. They were very good deeds. But those coupons... In return for that, we gave you something in the dunya. Now today, you have nothing with us because the link with Allah is not there. So this topic and this issue that we are talking about is known as the issue of shirk. Association of partnership with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If anyone feels irked by that word, then there is something wrong with the heart. 
If anyone feels like they don't want to listen to anything connected to that word, then there is something wrong with the way we perceive our own maker. Because he says, he says, Allah does not forgive the association of partnership with him. But besides that, he may forgive whatever else he would like to forgive. Whatever he wants to forgive. So if a person dies in the condition of association of partnership with Allah, then even if they have many other good deeds, they are in very great danger to put it lightly. And this is why I said when I started this particular talk, that if we are sincerely searching for the method of sincerity, we will be able to be sincere correctly. Because sincerity with knowledge is true sincerity. But when someone is sincere with no knowledge, they may not be able to be sincere. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us knowledge and sincerity. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, primarily, when we have a link directly with Allah, we worship none but Him. Like they say in the English language, come rain, come sunshine. We worship Allah alone, subhanallah. Rainy day or a good day, whatever day it is, I worship Allah alone. I will not turn to anything besides Allah. My act of worship is for Allah. My prayer is for Allah. My sacrifice is for Allah. My life is for Allah. My death is for Allah. قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهِ This is an instruction. Muhammad ﷺ being instructed to utter. Say that indeed my prayer is for Allah. My sacrifice for Allah. My life, my death for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No partners does he have. So that is the prime method of earning the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thereafter, there are so many things that would earn the pleasure of Allah. To reach out to someone in need would earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To be able to develop oneself internally would earn the pleasure of Allah. To get up at night when everyone is asleep and to cry to Allah, to engage in acts of worship, to read his book, to try and understand the book of Allah, to spread the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All this is part and parcel of trying to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now comes a very interesting point. Do you know when you have a football match, what happens? You have a specific time. You are given a 90 minute slot. What is your job? For the whole 90 minutes, you are only supposed to make your trials to get the ball between two little metal poles. Do you agree? Is there anything else with football? Nothing. For 90 minutes, the only thing that will make you a top footballer or the best team is you need to always be bombarding in one way and try your best no matter how you do it for as long as obviously the rules are fulfilled but you pass it here pass it there you kick it from a distance you kick it from one corner one side for as long as it gets to between those two pillars or those two posts you are a successful footballer so is it possible for us my brothers and sisters that the whistle is blown to start the match and then we sit, we greet each other, say, guys, bring the tea. Let's have some tea in the middle here and we have some tea. Does it ever happen? No, because we know the time is limited. I need to pack away as many goals as I can in order to finish the game as a victorious person or team. That's my job. If I'm really lucky and we still haven't yet scored much, Allah will say, or should I say the match? We we're first talking about football. We find the match, they'll say, hang on, you can have a bit more extra time. Why? Because there's still no goal. If the goals are there, he may take you away. Or should I say, you see the example I'm giving you? I'm already heading that in that direction, thinking very fast, thinking of my flight in a few minutes, inshallah. <laughs> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a life of a few years. Our job in this life of a few years is to pack away as many deeds as possible that will earn the pleasure of Allah. If there is no time for sitting back and relaxing, no time for actually thinking today is a day off. I'm going to not 
you know, earn the pleasure of Allah. It might be your last day. You cannot say, look, Salah, okay, I'm going to make tawbah, but from tomorrow morning, I'm going to be regular. No, you are wasting your time. The goalposts are wide open. There's no goalkeeper there today. Go and score the goal and make sure you get one after the other. The whistle may be blown at any minute. You need to be a person who has got what he is really alive for by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant us goodness. What am I living for? In order to earn the pleasure of Allah. That's what he made me for. This is the whole reason of my existence. And I forget it. And like we said, if you're lucky, Allah might give you a few more years and say, hang on, you know what? You've already lived for 60 years, but you know, A'marul ummati ma bayna sittina ila sab'een. The lifespan of this ummah between 60 and 70, we want to give you a few more years so that you can score a few more goals. And this is why when we are older, we generally simmer down much more. But the winner is he, whom in his or her peak, he scores all the goals or she scores the goals. Shabun nasha'a fi ibadatillahi ta'ala. A youngster, he's got the energy, he's got everything bubbling. He knows or she knows everything is possible, but he still says, no, let me score those goals. Subhanallah, no wasting of time. I'm there for salah. I'm going to stay away from something haram. You know, when a person commits adultery or does a bad deed, it's like scoring an own goal. That's what it is like. You won down against shaitan. You won down against shaitan. Why would we do that? My energy, my effort, and I'm compromising my jannah by compromising the pleasure of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So getting back to the pleasure of Allah, I need to promise Allah. And this is the promise we need to make here and now that Ya Allah, from this day up to the day you take me away, Ilaha al-Alameen, O Lord of the worlds, make it easy for me to score as many goals as possible, meaning to earn your pleasure in as many ways as possible, such that the day you take me away, I will be a person who will really be at peace and so happy. Imagine when the World Cup is won. And this is something of the dunya. Sorry, when we in the UK, we normally have to give examples of football. <laughs> you know, you walk past there and you see the Arsenal Stadium and you go this direction, you see something else. But to be honest, if someone has won the World Cup, some team, they are so happy. They worked so hard for the entire season. And then they get the cup and they relax and they sit back and they start thinking now, what will we do the next time? And you know, next season and so on. They're so happy. They have a break. When we have scored so many goals and tried our best to earn the pleasure of Allah. So I made sure I was there for Salah. I made sure I learned. I made sure I put into practice. I made sure I abstained from sin. I made sure I engaged in what is known as istighfar. I asked Allah's forgiveness constantly because I am no saint, no matter, even if I'm trying my best, but I ask Allah's forgiveness constantly because one of the ways of earning the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to seek Allah's forgiveness regularly, regularly on a constant basis. Every moment that you remember, ask Allah's forgiveness. Ya Allah, forgive my shortcomings. Grant me strength, grant me steadfastness. Keep your tongue moist with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if a person has struggled and they have strove through the years, the day they pass away, they will be so happy and delighted, sit back, relaxed, Phew, that life is over. And mashallah, tabarakallah, we are now hoping for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at this, the pleasure of Allah. So it requires a great lot of strength. And in order for this to be achieved, Something very important. We need to witness the newborn and we need to witness those who are leaving in our midst. Those two. You witness them, you watch them, you learn the lesson. We were born, we were young, we knew nothing. Wallahu akhrajakum min butuni ummahatikum la ta'lamuna shay'a. When Allah created you, removed you from the wombs of your mothers, you knew nothing. We knew absolutely zero. Today we're sitting, we're understanding each other. We've learned over the years. Allah says, we gave you the hearts, we gave you the eyes, we gave you the ears, we gave you the capacity. And we, we, we have kept a certain system in place and moving through that system, mashallah, you've gained so much. But watch those who depart. Watch those who depart and ask yourself, were they not little babies one day? Were they not like me with full of my strength and energy and effort? Now, where are they? One would learn a great lesson by watching those who are who have departed or looking at their lives and contemplating over our own. Today you are energetic. 
before you know it, you will be a person, if Allah has given you age, who may not be able to walk properly. May Allah grant us goodness. Before you know it, you will definitely be a person who's so old that you look at the youngsters and they start calling you grandpa or granny and so on. You know, some people don't like to be called that. I know of one man when his grandchildren used to call him grandpa. He says, no, call me pa. And I told him, but why? He says, it makes me sound too old. I said, but you are old. Come on, man. Allahu Akbar. So the lesson we learn is, the le and it's a true lesson that we learn. Life is so short. Before you know it, all these sins that we are so, you know, energetic regarding sometimes, they become a means of distress in our minds and hearts. Why did I have to do that? Why did I have to shift and drift away from the path of the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It was not worth it. Life was too short. Let me pack away as many good deeds as I can. But you require energy, dedication, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amazing how it's simple to say you want to please Allah, you need to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to love him. If you love Allah, it's not just a statement by your tongues. You know, sometimes and nowadays this happens a lot. You find boy and girl meet, you know, boy meets girl instead of boy meets world. Boy meets girl. And what does he say? He's just seen her and he says, I love you. And girl is smacked, flattered, gone. And what does she say? I love you too. But to be honest with you, it's a word from the mouth. It means nothing. You haven't even lived. You don't even know the character. They say love at first sight. Well, that means you just loved a shape. That's all you loved. And perhaps a bit of a voice maybe. But you don't know what lies beneath Allahu Akbar. So we say the statement of love is never ever proof of the love. Never ever. To utter is the easiest thing to do. You know, one day when I was in India, I went and I saw one of the top watches in the market. It was a top watch, a, a designer. I can't recall Patek Philip or something of that nature. Normally you'd find it for about 20, 25,000 pounds here. And I looked at this watch and I asked the man, what's the price? And he gave me a price which was equivalent to about four pounds. So I looked at it and it looked so genuine. I said, but it's written there, it says there, I think it, it said there, Swiss or something of that nature. He says, it says, I told him it says Swiss there. He says, my brother, if the people can copy the entire watch for you, to write Swiss is the easiest thing they did. <laughs> Do you understand? <laughs> to write Swiss is the easiest thing. The rest of it was much more difficult. The point being raised here is for someone to say, I love you, is the simplest word. But... The rest of it is what counts, subhanAllah. When we say, Ya Allah, I love you, I love Allah, I love his Rasul, Wallahi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A statement sometimes really is void of reality if it is not substantiated by action in that regard. Amazing. Something simple. Tell your daughters, tell your sons. They will understand. Do not be gullible. Don't fall to the statement of anyone who says, I love you, because another will come and utter it with a better accent and utter it in a sweeter way and repeat it more often. And then you fall for them. Subhanallah. So it's not about utterance alone. No, you need to prove your metal. You need to show that this is what it is. So the same applies to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want the pleasure of Allah? You really do? Well, in that particular case, don't just say, I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I love the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let's see the lives of ours head in the direction that even if we don't utter it to the masses, they will pick it up. This man is very close to Allah by the will of Allah. Obviously, none of us knows who is the next closest man to Allah. We can never ever tell. But sometimes there are little signs to say there's a good man, you know, inshallah, we hope that this man is a decent, pious man by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the point being raised is to earn the pleasure of Allah, we need to prove the love that we claim to have of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In order to do that, we need to go back to that knowledge that we were speaking about. Because without knowing what is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will never be able to love him truly. Some people think the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just an utterance. And some people think it's just one aspect. So this is why you find a lot of people 
who would not miss a single salah but they go home and their attitude with their spouses and their children and the people around them is unbecoming of a Muslim. It is not befitting a true believer. But the man reads full salah every day he's there and he greets the people around, mashallah. But when he goes back to his business, he cheats, he deceives, he lies, he swears because people have thought to themselves that the love of Allah is depicted by me reading five salah and that's it. Stop there. That's not the only thing. That's not the only thing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May he open our doors. The love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is far deeper than just fulfilling salah. Although the fulfillment of salah correctly will automatically lead a person to rectifying their character and conduct. If I just fulfill salah because I have to, I may have fulfilled my duty. But when I read it because I want to, and because I'm a Muslim and because of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will find myself in the masjid 10, 20 minutes before the salah, not just last minute.com as it is. They call it last minute.com because every one of us, when it comes to journeying last minute, we start wanting to do things. May Allah protect us. We might have exceptions, but by the will of Allah, we as Muslims should start learning. May Allah make myself strong firstly and then everyone else. That when you do something because you want to do it because you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the quality of it is far better than if you're just doing it to get done with it. MashaAllah. You know, when a person is fulfilling salah because they need to get done with it, there are two surahs that come to mind. Inna kal kawthar and qul huwa Allahu ahad. It's over. Why? Every salah, my brother. What's the reason? I just need to get done with it. So as soon as you say, well, in default, you don't need to think <laughs> it's a reality. I know it's a reality. It's a fact. People have told us it happens. Why? You just need to get done with it. If that's the case, my brother, my sister, I call upon myself and yourselves to improve on that. Do it because you want to do it. Start reading what duha, start reading what teen, something else in your salah. It will come by the will of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala and then you earn the pleasure of Allah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has an amazing plan. Do you know what it is? The plan of Allah is such he says in a hadith Qudsi that if you come closer to me by a hand span I come closer to you a whole foot and if you come closer to me say for example the hadith says walking I come closer to you quicker than that which means rushing or perhaps in a faster way amazing so if we try to earn the pleasure of allah allah becomes pleased with us even quicker even faster than we can amazing this is the plan of allah so we need to just try this is why we say when we read salatul maghrib and mashallah this masjid it's not the first time i'm here every time i've been here or the last time i was here mashallah the salah you relaxed you hear powerful solid tilawa which is correct in its nature and you just think to yourself let this thing carry on and before you know it it's over but if we are just getting if we just want to get over with it we start thinking when is he going to say allahu akbar this is salatul maghrib man come on when is he going to say allahu akbar that's a weakness in the heart the reason is we just want to get done with it we need to develop ourselves slightly to say hang on I'm doing this for Allah. I love Allah. This is Salah. I'm plugged in with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by enjoying it. And do you know what that will make us do? It will make us go into the deeper meanings of the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because today we heard, for example, Surah An-Nur and we heard the beautiful verses. Perhaps a lot of us don't even know the meanings of what was read yet. We've been Muslim for many decades. Do you know that? And we don't know. Amazing. Allah protect us. This afternoon I asked a question elsewhere. How many of us have read a detailed biography of Muhammad Sallallahu life from beginning to end? And a few brothers and sisters put up their hands. I want to ask you a question here by show of hands. And be honest, there's no need. You know, we're, we're, I just want to prove a point in order to encourage myself and yourselves. How many of us have gone through the, the Quran's meaning verse by verse from the cover right to the other cover, the meaning of the Quran in the language we understand best. Put up your hand from cover to cover. The meaning of the Quran 
from cover to cover in a language that we know. Okay, let's put our hands down. My brothers and my sisters. I haven't seen the sisters, but I'm sure we have a similar response. We can do better, can't we? We can do better. The next time by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everyone's hand should be up. You're talking of the Quran? Yes, indeed, we've read it covered. I know what Allah has said. Why? I want to earn the pleasure of Allah. How can I want to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I haven't yet read his book. Allahu Akbar. If your girlfriend writes a book, you'll read it from cover to cover, memorize it and tell her, test me, I love you. <laughs> it's a fact. It's a reality. In order to prove love to someone who perhaps is not even going to benefit you in this world, we would go the extra mile and two miles. We would climb the mountain and jump off the cliff. But for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, come on, my brothers and sisters, we can do better. Have we not read the Quran, the meaning of the words of the Quran cover to cover? It should be our favorite book. That is how we will earn the pleasure of Allah. Imagine we get to the Akhirah. And imagine we are asked about what we've done with the word of Allah. Here is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam complaining. وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا We can cry if we understand that. Here Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, Ya Rabbi, oh my Rabb, my people, my nation, my people have taken this Quran. Mahjuran means they've like abandoned this book. They have taken it lightly. May Allah protect us. Really, it is the most important word. The word of my maker and yours. My brothers and sisters, I hope this little motivation has shaken us up to make a promise today that I'm going to pick up this Sahih International, which is by far one of the most simple Qur'ans I've come across to understand. The language is so easy. It is so simple. I'm sure you can pick up one here at Al Muntada. And subhanallah, we go through it cover to cover by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will never be fooled by people who want to take our deen away from us. Never. Because we've learned the word of Allah. We've understood the word of our maker. We know that we're going to return to the one whom we've spent our entire lives trying to please. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with us. May he open our doors. May he grant us goodness. My brothers and sisters, we've discussed the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not, so, not in so much of detail, but a few aspects and a few ways that we can achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I hope and I pray that whatever I have said thus far has been really a point of motivation to myself and yourselves. There are a few resolutions that I hope we've made this evening. And I hope inshallah we can use our energies like we said to score as many goals as possible to be able to spend our lives in a way that we can achieve as much as we can in these few years by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before we become old or before we pass away. And I hope and I pray every single one of us can make an effort to learn the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a language that we understand. And in such a way that the next time we hear an Imam reading a surah by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at least we get the gist of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. That is the bare minimum. If we do not use our energies and efforts in that direction, we will surely be at a loss. We will surely be at a loss. We have surely wasted our intellect. We have wasted our time, effort, energy, our lives, our young age and so on. Yet. It was not impossible for us to struggle or to strive a little bit to endure and to try our best to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.